Catronio and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is going to be a short lesson on the Andante in A minor by Fernando Carulli. So I originally recorded this piece back in August of 2011 and relatively recently it hit over uh, 20,000 views on YouTube and I figured that in celebration of uh, that little milestone that I would release a little lesson video on the piece as well as offer uh, the sheet music and tabs. Uh, so if you're interested in those, you can follow the link in the description down below. So before we get started, we're going to do a quick overview of the piece and some of the techniques that are needed in performing the piece. Uh, the piece uses two major techniques. The first would be bass chord technique or called boom chick technique. We're going back and forth between a chord and a bass note. Sounds like this. we have that throughout the whole entire uh, first section of the song. The next um, technique that we use a lot of is also a Alberti bass style technique. Not really Alberti bass, but we've got this melody on the top notes um, while we have an ostinato bass uh, in the bottom, which sounds like this. So those are our two main techniques that we have going on in the piece. Um, when you're doing the bass chord technique, what you want to make sure of is that when you pluck the thumb, you're going to release the fingers. And when the fingers play, you're going to come back to the bass note with the thumb, like this. With the Alberti bass, um, style in the right hand what you want to make sure of is that you know uh, which right hand finger is playing what string and really we're assigning um, those fingers to strings so your index finger will always play the third string middle will always play the uh, second string and your ring finger will always play the first string and you want to make sure that you know melodically what string those melody notes are on how they line up in the right hand for greater control. So as I play through this, you'll notice that the first two chords are have the melody on the second string, so I'm using the middle finger uh, for those top notes. Now when I go to the high E note, I'm gonna switch and use my A finger for all of those That makes it really easy so that way you know exactly where you are on the guitar and then my thumb is taking care of any of the bass notes from the fourth string down to the sixth string and my index finger is playing that inner voice the final technique that you're that this piece uses a lot of are slurs uh, we have a lot of slurs between uh, two and four going there and then we also have um, some four one pull-offs Also, some open string uh, pull-ups. And as we go um, and take a look through this piece, we'll isolate those a little bit and talk more about them. So before we start diving into the piece and start working on sections, I want to go over just the basic structure. And the structure can be really important. It can help you uh, in uh, splitting up the piece and working on different sections. And also, it's good to know this structure as you're performing the piece as well. So the large piece is a large ABA structure uh, where you have the A section being in A minor and then the B section is in the um, relative major of C major. And then there's a da capo which brings you back to the beginning again. Uh, and then inside of that ABA structure, the A section is actually another ABA structure um, where you are in A minor
and then the B section of, or the second section, the B section of the of that section, we go into E major. We can hear the introduction of that C sharp. Um, the B section does the same thing, um, but instead it's the first part of the B section is in C major. And then we go to G major for a little bit for the second uh, B section, and then back to G major again. So each of the sections themselves can be broken down into ABA forms. So let's dive right in to the piece and start taking a look at it. So the A section primarily deals with boom chick in the right hand as well as slurs in the left hand. With the slurs, what you wanna do with your hammer-ons is you wanna make sure that the finger stays nice and curled, especially when you have a hammer-on between two and four, and that you're getting really good contact with the tip of the finger uh, coming down, as well as using the large part of that uh, finger knuckle to come down and make that slur sound. And what you can do if you're new to slurs and you've never played them before, or if you're still working on them and trying to perfect them, is you can take that finger combination, that two, four combination, and you can just practice that. You wanna make sure that you're not using a really tight grip behind uh, the neck of the guitar. The left hand stays pretty loose. And you're really maintaining the curvature of the finger and plucking, um, excuse me, and hammering on from the large knuckle. Uh, at first, it might be a little difficult to gain control because you're gonna try and really make sure that you get onto the tip of that finger as you go through. So you don't want the finger to be off too far and come down. You wanna really maintain the curl of that. So you can isolate this little opening scale section. And you can just practice that. And that'll work on your slurs. You have another slur passage. Um, you have more slur passages coming up where the, um, you gotta pull off. I use four to one here. And I like using my fourth finger rather than my third finger because it just provides me a little bit more security on uh, the neck of the guitar as I go through. So with the pull off now, what you wanna think of is almost like you're doing a restro with the pinky. You're gonna come and maybe to start practicing that if your pull offs aren't all that good, you can just isolate four to one. Now, also you need to make sure that this first finger is down prepared to receive the C note when you pluck it. So my pinky is actually plucking that string as I go through. So here, I would practice that little section as it goes through. And then we have the next slur section is the same as the first. Now we get an extended slur section. And again, you can break these up with descending slurs. So this is an open string slur going to an open. So again, you want to actually pluck the string with that finger. Again, another 4-1 slur, open string. Now with that C D B slur, you wanna be careful not to, to get both strings like that, but rather, um, want to make sure that you don't follow through and hit that open E by accident. Okay. So those are the slurs of that first half. Um, as we go through with the boom chick, I'm making sure to really make sure that my fingers are alternating with my thumb. Now in measure uh, seven of the A section, uh, I'm actually using a right hand fingering that just allows me to have good string crossings all the way through. 
So here on this scale, I'm going M slur, I, M. And now I'm going to use my A finger on the top. A, M, I, M, I, M, I. And the reason for that is that I get good string crossings all the way through by introducing that A finger. And that's notated in the sheet music um, for download. So in the B section, there are no slurs. Uh, you still have more of the boom chick texture, uh, but we do have a little bit more difficult left hand fingerings. We've seen this pattern before um, in the A section. So that's not too difficult, but if you're not used to that fingering, um, you really wanna sit there. You can just practice those two chords. And now what I'm doing to help me out a little bit is that um, for most of the notes, uh, single notes, when I have the scales, you'll notice that I'm using four on the third fret instead of my third finger. And what's that, what that's doing for my hand is it's allowing it to be a little bit more relaxed. I don't have to worry about holding this one finger per fret shape. Um, however, this positioning feels different to me than this positioning. In fact, my thumb behind the neck of the guitar is moving. So I don't know if you can see that, but here's one finger per fret. You'll notice that my thumb is pretty much uh, in between the second and third fret, but when I'm using my pinky on the third fret instead, my thumb stays more um, behind the second fret. And what that allows is by adjusting my thumb, that allows me to make this reach a little bit easier. And so when I have this E major chord going to now becomes an E7 chord. I'm actually sort of moving that hand a little bit to help out um, rather than staying right in this position and trying to stretch, I'm allowing my hand to move. And then in measure, uh, measure 11, I'm using my first finger on the high E as a guide finger for my D, back to C, going that way, same stretch. Now here I'm using three and two on B and D. I use that same um, fingering three and two. And I come down gives me a little bit of an easier transition. In the left hand, makes that left hand transition a little bit easier. Uh, and then the, the piece repeats from measure pickups to measure 17 to the end. It's just a repeat of the, of the first eight measures. So moving on to the B section, this is where we have um, that Alberti bass style texture in moving sixths. As we go through. So what you could do to make an exercise, if you're not used to those moving sixths uh, on the guitar, you can make a little exercise out of that scale. And um, it could sound something like this. And what's really great about that is that that is really starting to teach the left hand some finger independence um, and grabbing some you know different combinations of um, of note fingerings together. And what's really important is that I'm keeping that melody note sustaining, so I'm not doing that as it goes through. Um, we do have an open string to second finger slur. That's the only slur that happens in this whole entire section. So again, you want to keep the finger curled and you want it to land straight onto the tip of the finger, moving from this large knuckle. This goes through. Uh, 
fingering wise, there's nothing really uh, crazy going on in this section other than those moving six in the chords. And if you, again, if you haven't done that um, before, uh, just creating an exercise out of that scale would be uh, super easy. And you can take measures 26 through uh, 29 and just use that as your little technique practice. I would I would advise practicing it not only that way but maybe even before just to develop the chord shapes in the left hand playing them as chords as three note chords and I'm maintaining the left the right hand fingering as I play this and probably some of the hardest part is going to be this two four combination whether it's on the B D or E G. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're really curling that pinky and getting on the tip of it and getting a nice solid connection on the guitar. So I hope you've enjoyed this small lesson on the Andante in A minor by Carulli. Uh, the sheet music is available in on my website nickatronio.com and the links to the direct uh, website page will be in the description below. Uh, thanks again for watching. And thank you to all those who have watched my initial video of this piece and have made it go 20,000 views. And I'll see you next time.